played more regular season and postseason NCAA games than any other venue. Dave Strader along with David Kaplan here at courtside in a game of Atlantic 10 Conference significance and cap any time it's two Philadelphia schools, the Big Five, always significant to the players and coaches. This is as good an environment as you will find in college basketball. It's the cathedral as they like to call it and this is going to be a war here today. And because of this type of atmosphere, the crowd right on top of you, always important to be able to handle pressure. Tyreek Duran can do it with the best of them. Number three for LaSalle. His backcourt partner is Ramon Galloway, who fed him in the lane. Now Galloway, 12 on the shot clock. Difficult bounce pass. Got it inside for the finish by Jarrell Wright. High ball screen, roll to the basket. Pass has to be precision. He got it there. St. Joe's comes in at 5-5 five and five in the conference as that mid-range shot contested rims out. While LaSalle is 7-3. D.J. Peterson after the quick up finds Galloway. Nice look underneath again to right who lays it up and in. Really nice one bounce, explode up and score. Really good job by LaSalle to attack inside. Chris Wilson, this is Langston Galloway, no relation to LaSalle's Ramon. Skip pass to the baseline, 10 on the shot clock. Nice ball fake, attacking the rim, drawing some contact, it looked like, but no call. And the Explorers have it, having scored the first four points of the ball game. Ramon Galloway with the high floater off the front rim, and a foul on the rebound. Well, I can't believe there wasn't contact at the other end. It certainly looked like a foul be coming up. Go back to the baseline. He elevates looking for the dunk, and he got hit right on the arm. I don't know how that was not called. No doubt that was a foul. And at the other end, uh, it was number 25, Jerome Wright, that picked up his first personal foul. He has the two baskets so far in this ball game. Watch how much LaSalle pressures the ball. That's the key to what they do. They don't double inside on the low post. They ball pressure you. Langston Galloway being watched by Sam Mills. And now right with a steal attempt. But put it right back to Langston Galloway, who was fouled on the play by Peterson. That'll be his first. Bring some size in. Big Steve Zach, who is just a sophomore, 6'11, 245, and he'll be asked to front the post. Spinning into the lane. St. Joe's trying to explore things close to the basket. Kicked out for the three ball that's off the front rim from Carl Jones. St. Joe's gets it back. This is man's basketball. You better bring your hard hat today and be ready for contact. C.J. Aiken now sets the high ball screen. Jones. Ronald Roberts. Now Wilson attacks with the left hand and finishes. And the Hawks have their first two of the afternoon. Pretty move. Turned the corner. He saw a sliver of daylight. Got to the backboard. Nothing pretty and converted. They needed that basket. Settle everybody down. Zach, who played uh, 29 minutes in LaSalle's recent game, an overtime win at St. Bonaventure, rolled to the basket, couldn't collect the pass from Galloway. First turnover for LaSalle. Well, that was the high ball screen that they scored on earlier. It was there again. Zach never turned his head. John Giannini just said, you know, it's, uh, in very explicit terms, look for the ball! Two lead for LaSalle. Darrell Wright, who has both baskets for the Explorers on the bench with the first substitution. Langston Galloway, nice ball fake, got himself inside the arc for two to tie it up. Good head and shoulder fake. Recycle, get the dribble, get into rhythm, and bury the 12 footer. An awesome environment in here. Now Duran, after the handoff, gets it back. 
Had no assists and six turnovers in that game at St. Bonaventure when he was feeling under the weather. And after the turnover here, it is Langston Galloway finishing at the other end. And first lead of the ball game for the Hawks. Nice job, recognition off the turnover. Boom, going the other way offensively and attack. Ramon Galloway finds Peterson, the lefty. Knocks down the three. Ronald Roberts a little slow on the closeout there. Well, that's the different variations. High ball screen, look for the big guy, trail him down the lane, guy open at the arc. Now Roberts, difficult pass, got away with it. Jones, quick roll to the basket. Roberts lays it up too strong, tapped it up, no good. Quickly back the other way, Sam Mills. And Galloway couldn't handle the kick to the three-point spot. Third turnover for the Explorers. And LaSalle with a 7-6 lead. Just under five minutes gone in the ball game. remaining in the first half 7-6 lead for the LaSalle Explorers who have hit three out of four but they've turned the ball over three times hello Knesevic number 21 in the ball game for the Hawks 2-3 zone different look LaSalle's going to play 90% man but they will give you different looks 2-3 there St. Joe's does it convert one and done Thanks very much. LaSalle with a 7-6 lead over St. Joseph's in this uh, matchup with significance in the Atlantic 10 Conference and also, of course, because it's two schools here in Philadelphia that are part of the Big Five. A sold-out palestra here in Philadelphia. LaSalle wearing the white uh, designated as the home team. We will keep you updated on what's going on with the curling event. As the uh, shot by Langston Galloway from the corner, no good. Sal scored the first 
four points of this game, and then the Hawks the next six, and that's the second three-point field goal that LaSalle has hit, and it comes from Sam Mills, who hit seven threes for a career-high 21 points a couple games back against Fordham. And a 6-0 run now. It's been a game of runs. First four by LaSalle, the next six by St. Joe's, and now six straight by the Explorers. Baseline three on the way is good by Carl Jones, who averages 15 for the Hawks. They come in 5-5 five and five in the A-10. They're trying to solidify a spot on the top 12. 12 of the 16 A-10 teams will make it to the postseason tournament at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn coming up next month. As you take a look at the players that are currently on the floor for both teams, LaSalle at 7-3, currently in fourth. And the top four get a bye, and we're talking to Dr. John Giannini. Stress the importance of trying to stay in the top four and get that first round bye as the baseline shot by Langston Galloway. No relation to this young man, Ramon Galloway, who wears number 55 for LaSalle. As Duran lightning quick after the feed, drives the baseline and lays it in. When you've got guards that can attack as well as LaSalle, they can play four at a time. They really recognize the changeover from defense to offense. Great job in transition there. Jones, Galloway, Roberts, Kanasevic, and Wilson on the court for Phil Martelli in his 18th year here at St. Joe's. Range three on the way is too long, just barely caught glass. But the Hawks get it back. Martelli talked to, with us as a shot clock violation will be the first turnover for the Hawks. Bill Martelli talked with uh, great compassion about this arena. Said it's a building that's noisy, Cap, even when there's nobody in it. Right. <laughs> he, we were looking around, there was nobody here. It's three hours before game time, and he said, it's noisy in here. He goes, I'm not telling you there's ghosts. I'm just telling you, come in here at night when no one's here. It's noisy in here. <laughs> he walked in, he said, to a bunch of LaSalle students who were harassing him and yelling at him. He said, I've been coaching for over 600 games, and most of them here in this city in matchups like this. It doesn't bother me, but boy, it does add to the atmosphere. As a strong rebound by Kanasevic draws the foul from LaSalle. We will step away from the cluster where the Explorers have an early three-point lead over the Hawks. College basketball on the NBC Sports Network is brought to you by U.S. Bank. All of us serving you, member FDIC. 
Dave Strader, David Kaplan. Uh, David, you've had a lot of experience in college basketball. Hard for me to believe this is your first trip into the Palestra. Your initial thoughts? It's absolutely awesome to see both ends so pro their own team. It's not just fans here. They are aligned one side or the other. It's awesome. And it is an important game in the Atlantic 10 Conference, as we mentioned a few moments ago. LaSalle coming in at 7-3, and three, wants to stay in that top four to get a bye in the first round of the Atlantic 10 Tournament, which will be played uh, at Barclays Center this year. And, of course, uh, for St. Joseph's uh, at 5-5, five and five, they were a lot of people's uh, preseason pick to win this Atlantic 10. It hasn't gone quite so smoothly for Phil Martelli's no, squad. In, in talking with him and in going to his practices, he said, we're good defensively. I just told my athletic director, we're a good defensive team. He said, offensively, we're like a speed bump. We get going and boom, we hit a speed bump. He said, we've got to get more rhythm. Janosevic getting his first two. He was a big part of the game last year played here between these two teams with 18 points and 15 rebounds. LaSalle has turned the ball over five times here in this first half now as Langston Galloway exploring the baseline, almost stepped out of bounds. Now Aiken kicks it back out. Janosevic thought about the three, now bounces underneath three on the shot clock. A forced baseline shot nearly went down for C.J. Aiken. But LaSalle has the ball and the one-point lead in a number of 2-3 zone possessions defensively out of LaSalle, and it's been something that has problem, caused problems for St. Joe's. The Big Five schools at one time have all used the Palestra as a home court. It is uh, Penn's home court out of the Ivy League. But you have these two schools and Temple out of the Atlantic 10. Now kicked down the wing, and the... Three-pointer on the way from Darius Quarles is in the ball game is no good. And Duran is fouled by Langston Galloway. Well, they've got to do a better job, LaSalle, at taking care of the basketball inside. They have turned it over. I believe Steve Zach has three turnovers since he's come into the game. When you pass out of the post, you've got to know where when the ball comes into you, if I don't have an offensive move now, it's got to go back out. First foul on Langston Galloway, just the first team foul against St. Joe's as we approach the halfway mark of this first half. St. Joe's coming off a home court win over Richmond. And as I mentioned, LaSalle winning in overtime at St. Bonaventure. Peterson into the lane, kicks it on the baseline. Jarrell Wright, who had the first four points of the game, and he travels. Seventh turnover already for the Explorers. Got to be stronger with the basketball if you're going to make a power move. And if you're not inside out, you can refeed the post. There's no rule you can't. Don't let the ball go in there and let it be dying in on the block. Duran all over Jones as the ball deflected out of bounds, and that'll be the second St. Joe's turnover right in front of the LaSalle bench. Nice job defensively inside by Wright. There's a look at Phil Martelli, one of the really great characters in college basketball. Phenomenal guy to talk to, dean of A-10 coaches. And of course, uh, here in the first half with his team defensively right in front of him, and he talked with us about the numbers cap over the last couple of years indicate that St. Joe's does not defend nearly as well in the second half when the defensive end of the court is away from the bench as LaSalle turns it over again. Double, they ran a second man down on the block. LaSalle doesn't do that, St. Joe's does, and boom, turned right into the second defender, ball gone. St. Joe's briefly had the lead, and we get a whistle. I think Kanosevic, yes, is gonna be called on the foul. All right, watch the double come. Right from behind, never sees it, turns right into the double. Some people will run, some coaches will use a second big man and take him from the other side of the lane. St. Joe's took a perimeter player, dropped him down. Right turn right into the double, exactly like you draw it up. It's gone the other way. Number 21, Tyrone Garland. Into the ball game. For LaSalle is St. Joe's now. 
difficult reverse layup is good. Panasevic and uh, Dr. John Giannini is emphatic with the official that he hooked with his off arm as uh, Duran's three-pointer, but a whistle before. I think he hooks with the armor. I think John Giannini, absolutely. No question about it. Let's take a look at a low angle look at it. Watch him hook. He's gonna hook. You cannot hold the defender off. It goes right back to what John Adams, the head of NCAA officials, calls rhythm, speed, balance, and quickness, RSPQ. You take somebody's ability to make a play away, it's an automatic foul, and that's what he's still yelling about. He's right. Hawks with their second lead of the ball game. St. Joe's over the years has won better than 67% of the ball games they have played in the Palestra. Langston Galloway before Ramon Galloway could close out on him, hits the three. Real nice job. LaSalle was a day late and a dollar short getting out to contest it on the perimeter. When Langston Galloway had it in his hands, he was ready to shoot it. Quick touch pass back to Tyrone Garland, the transfer from Virginia Tech. We played uh, high school ball here in Philadelphia. Well, the Hawks on a 7-0 run. They've done it inside, and they've done it outside as well. As Langston Galloway knocks it down and celebrates the Hawks with a four-point lead. St. Joe's run as LaSalle has gone better than uh, five minutes without a field goal. Tyrone <laughs> Garland looking to uh, end the run here, playing in his 17th game. He was not eligible until the Bucknell game mid-December, but after the second free throw miss, a chance for a three-pointer is no good by Sam Mills. lead. The two number 10s watching each other. Mills against Langston Galloway. Kanasevic difficult lob inside. Virtually no chance for C.J. Aiken to corral that pass. Three 
three-pointer by Garland is no good. Three-pointer from the other side, knocked down by Tyreek Durham. Well, they've done a much better job, LaSalle, at crashing to the offensive glass. Even if it's a back tap, they got another opportunity and eventually ended up in a triple. Yeah, mentioning that uh, Duran coming off a game in which he had eight points and no assists, six turnovers, was not feeling well. He's a guy that John Giannini says has a chance to be certainly one of the top point guards in the A-10. Nearly turned over, now it is by the Hawks and back the other way. LaSalle has numbers. Garland with the left hand, no good. There was some contact there. And Tyrone Garland looking at the official, but no call coming. You are not going to get any type of a ticky-tack foul in the Big Five. Aiken into the lane, lays it off underneath. Kanasevic is fouled by Steve Zach. A lot of depth right now to the St. Joe's offense. Look how much penetration, how many guys flying at the rim makes it much easier for their type of game when Phil Martelli says we're like a speed bump offensively. We don't have any flow. When you can attack that close, it really takes the heat off. Fifteenth ball against the Explorers as Kandosevic knocks down the first of two. Carl Jones back in the ball game. Replacing Langston Galloway. Phil Martelli said to us, I would rather teach my guys how to play than teach them plays. He said, in a perfect world, the system I'd like to run, all freelance, where guys know how to play rather than you go here and you go there. Kanasevic knocks down the two free throws, giving him four points. And St. Joe's the three-point advantage. Duran with the crossover. Now Mills kicked back out. Duran with a hand in his face. Goes right at Roberts. Laid off underneath for Zach, who lays it in. Nice pass. Interior pass, and Zach didn't get fancy, didn't try and dunk it. Make the easy layup. First two for him. Roberts into the lane, hands it off. Kendall Sevick. Got a size mismatch. Uh, I thought Mills fell down, but he drew the call. Look at that interior pass. Don't put it on the deck and just finish the play. Nicely done by both guys. Kanasevic cannot believe yeah. they got him for an offensive foul. Second foul on Kanasevic. Bill Martelli all over <laughs> the official. Now his team third in the nation in terms of fewest fouls taken per game, just over 12 a game. First couple of months of the season, they were best in that category. Tyrone Garland rims it in and out. But he hasn't been able to find his stroke since coming off the bench. A true Philadelphia game, as Phil Martelli told us. Half the tickets to the St. Joe's fans and the other half to the LaSalle fans. Langston Galloway on the kick to Aiken. Better than 8,700 jammed into this historic venue. It opened in 1927. Five on the shot clock. Langston Galloway is going to have to force something up here, a fadeaway that's off the back iron. And out of bounds, last touch by Steve Zack. It'll be a fresh 35 for the Hawks. at the historic Palestra. Dave Strader, David Kaplan, one-point lead for St. Joe's. They have the basketball. Knocked away from behind by Ramon Galloway as he took it off of Chris Wilson. Seventh turnover now for the Hawks. Both teams guilty of turning the ball over. St. Joe's with a one-point lead. Mills into the lane. Difficult shot. But tipped up and in by Steve Zach, the 6'11 sophomore from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Difficult? That degree of difficulty oh. was off the charts when you got a 6'11 guy there to clean it up makes it a lot easier. Now Roberts spins into the lane. It's rejected by Zach. That's what he gives them. Ability to change directions on shots. 
Garland into the lane. Hook pass, Mills wide open for three, knocks it down. Tyreek Dern already had three fingers in the air when the ball was halfway there. Well, Zach rolled off the high ball screen, looked for it, he was open, and then the hook pass to the perimeter, and boom, bury the triple. Mentioned earlier, it's been a first half of runs, now a 7-0 run for the Explorers who have a four-point lead. Turned over by Jones, back the other way, Ramon Galloway hands it off to Garland who lays it in. That may get the lid off for Garland. He's made a great pass for a three. Now he gets a hoop in transition. But the beautiful execution of the high ball screen offense of LaSalle set that three-point basket up where he was wide open. Again, LaSalle comes in with a 7-3 and three record in the Atlantic 10 Conference. Tied with Butler and Xavier, trailing only St. Louis at 7-2 and, and VCU at 8-2. This is the last basket in transition, just a classic two-man break. But the other one that was so impressive, you saw there that hook pass that Garland threw back out to the three-point stripe, but it pulled all the defenders toward him because it looked like you had, see Zach right there in the middle, you think you're going to get the screen and roll, and instead, I'll be at the three-point strike, spotting up. Just get me the ball, I'll make it. Yeah. Talk about run. Sam Mills, I mentioned a couple of games back against Fordham. Seven threes, had 21 points, a career high. Follows that up the other night at St. Bonaventure. Missed all five field goals. And now he looks like he's uh, found the stroke here this afternoon at the Palestra. Six-point LaSalle lead. Inside Roberts. Nice play to Aiken. Now Giannini Cap told you and I before the game, when St. Joe's goes big and if their interior game is working, it'll be a problem for us. And it, we saw that right there, and they ran a second guy over to try and double the ball, and it completely confounded the sound end of the gun. Garland had it blocked, but Duran right there for the 15-footer for the elbow to get it right back for the sound. St. Joe's has changed their defense here to start this game. They're really using a full court press in a half court setting. So far, LaSalle's gotten some pretty good looks. Duran now with seven points for the Explorers. Twelve on the shot clock, just under two minutes remaining here in the first half. Wilson, nice look underneath to Aiken. A lot of contact there. And they... Look like they're making a concerted effort to get it inside. Here in the last couple of possessions, ain't going to go to the free throw line with the Hawks trailing by six.
LaSalle has a uh, six-point lead over St. Joe's here at the Palestra. Take a look at some of the three-point shooting. Well, they've done a real good job at getting open looks. To me, that's the key stat in the game, is what you do when you get an open look. Do you make them or do you not? Because you're going to have very few wide open looks. As you see here, load it up and bury it. you got so many people who are watching the game that are here. One half of the family went to St. Joe's. <laughs> One half of the family went to LaSalle. And this is an intense, intense environment here. 18 turnovers in the first half. 10 for St. Joe's, 8 for LaSalle. You see both teams with points off their uh, opponent's turnovers. Rebounding battle is even. C.J. Aiken is such a long athlete at 6 foot 10. I mean, he makes it really tough to score around the basket because he's so athletic. pounds of really solid muscle, she would be absolutely unstoppable. So Aiken with the two free throws now has four. And a little bit of pressure here. This is something that St. Joseph's did with success in the second half against Richmond to go on a 15-0 run. And we asked uh, Coach Martelli before the game with that success with the full court press, do you change what your philosophy is defensively? He said, no, that's not who we are. That worked in that game. But he did say you might see a little variation of that here this afternoon. See, unlike a lot of coaches who are so wedded to one system, he says we take every game different. What does it take to win today? That day, his teammate, his players said to him, okay, we've talked to his teammates. We've got to go to a press here. He said, okay, let's try it. 15-0 run. He said it was only supposed to be for one possession, but it worked. Then it worked again, so we stayed with it. As the Hawks turn it over, Ramon Galloway finds Tyreek Dorn for the three. That is good! When you have guard play that recognize, boom, we've changed from defense to offense, and they get to spots where you know they're going to be, easy. Tyreek Duran looking to bounce back from that off performance at St. Bonaventure, the first to double figures in this game this afternoon with 10. Half a minute remaining in the half, inside to Aiken, and that has worked the last few possessions here in this first half. Again, depth to the offense. Penetrate and then dish and he's finished inside. Pressure nearly pays off with a LaSalle turnover. Uh, Chris Wilson could not uh, quite save it. Here's the turnover. Now look how quick they get it out. He gets right to his spot. That pass was bouncing towards where he was going to be before he ever got there. It was like a quarterback running the West Coast offense. And with the South calling a timeout, remind you to stay with us at the half. Take a look at the action of the Big East. The Tar Heels in action. And a preview of a big Mountain West contest later on here on the NBC Sports Network between San Diego State and UNLV. Phil Martelli was telling us before the game, he said, we look... You asked him, do you look at, got to get to one of those four spots, got to move up in the standings? He said, no. All I look at is who we're playing, and if they're ahead of us in the standings, I look at it as a playoff game. He said, today, in here, we are playing a playoff game. And he said, if I had my druthers, I would like my team to play like LaSalle plays, yeah. be able to go four guards, have a lot of up-tempo capabilities. But he said, we are who we are. He changes his system every year based on his personnel. A lot of coaches don't have the willingness to do that. That's a great quality that he has. And Coach Martelli saying the most difficult thing to do is to defend the guy dribbling right in front of you. And a difficult guy to defend is Tyreek Duran, who missed with just a couple of seconds remaining in the half, three quarters length of the court, and hits the shot clock. And so we come to an end of the first half here at the Palestra with a five-point lead for the Explorers over the Hawks right now. Let's go to Carolyn Mano in our NBC Sports Network studio.
1,722 capacity crowd observing the athletes here this afternoon at the historic Palesta. Dave Schrader back along with David Kaplan as we take a look at the first half stats with the Explorers leading Dave by five. LaSalle did a better job the last portion of the second half at getting to open spots on the floor and banging down a couple threes. Turnover's really not a factor. They're close. Rebound's close. But it's getting to open spots and making the most of their opportunities. That's why LaSalle has a five-point lead. Close the half on a 14-6 run. Did the Explorers, who have a 15-1 record this year when leading at the half, while St. Joseph's had a problem, Dave. We talked a little bit about it in the first half. Defensively, in second halves of ball game, in six of their nine losses, they've had a lead in the second half and unable to finish in the lane there was Chris Wilson. And that, that's a two-year trend, according to Phil Martelli. He said, we've looked at everything. Our conditioning, our this. He said, everything's the same, except the numbers don't bear it out. We're trying to figure out why. The two Galloways, again, unrelated. Ramon, number 55, being guarded by Langston, number 10. But just a little bit of daylight is all Ramon needs to pull the trigger from deep and could not knock that one down. Wilson with the drive and kick. And turned over. And a little bit of a puzzled look by Carl uh, Jones, who goes by the nickname Tay. Tenth turnover for the Hawks. You have to look and ask yourself the question, okay, if I can complete this, what can he do with it out there? He threw a fastball, and he's going with his back to the basket to try and retreat it. He couldn't have done anything with it. Going with the fastball analogy, getting into your spring training mode uh, with pitchers and catchings uh, reporting recently, and the rest of spring training getting underway is inside. The guy that started things off with the first four points of the ball game, Jarrell Wright, able to recover and slam it home. He scored the first four points of the game in the first half, and you're exactly right. Now he gets off to a good start here, just tracked down a loose ball. Typical pass underneath for Roberts, who's fouled on the way up. Real nice interior pass, and there wasn't much that Galloway could do as he tried to come make a play along the baseline. That's a beautiful behind-the-back move, and then look at that pass, and then there's the foul right on the arm. Nothing he could do about it. First on Ramon Galloway, and the first on the Explorers here in the second half of the ball game. coming up a 16 point 10 rebound effort against Richmond 11th double double that he's had this year and the Hawks after the free throw miss get another possession here and Aiken turned the ball over okay John Giannini now is in dress shoes but before the game he was in his suit with gym shoes on, and I said, what's with the gym shoes? And one of the assistants said, he gets after it in the pregame warm-ups, working the guys out, so he puts gym shoes on and then switches into his game shoes, so to speak. Yeah, 45 minutes before tip, he's out on the court running the uh, guys through their offense. And that's why, so they can get uh, good post entries like that one to right, and he finishes again. First four points of the first half, first four points for the Explorers here in the second, Jarrell Wright. Explorers again, seven and three in the Atlantic 10. Nice look inside to Aiken. Looked like wow. he was gonna lay it in at the last second. He goes, no, I'm gonna make sure that this goes down. Well, that was a great pass, toss over the top, but he finished with authority. Floater off the glass and in. Real nice penetrating move by Galloway when you've got right inside. Everyone's thinking you're going to get the high screen roll, dump it to him. Instead, he just finishes himself. Fifteen on the shot clock. Jones looking inside. Roberts. Being watched by Wright. Contested shot from the corner, no good. Mills nearly had it slapped away. Good job recovering. 
Nice job defensively by LaSalle. Help down in the post and recover. Right with the spin. The left-hand motor is good. And a little look over to the bench. To say, what did you think of that, fellas? Bill Martelli may want a timeout. He may want to get a timeout or slow things down so he can get everybody a touch. Inside, Roberts. Nice, nice strong move. Job. He spread the floor. Phil Martelli pulled everyone out, got the thing he wanted to dive it inside. He knew he had the media timeout coming up. Doesn't want to burn a timeout if he doesn't have to. Three points now for Roberts, his first bucket after making a free throw earlier here in the second half. Ramon Galloway against Langston. Slapped out of his hands. 12 on the shot clock. Now the crowd letting Kyrie Duran know that the shot clock was winding down, couldn't hit the three. The three by Kyle Jones is good. He has six points. It was a ten-point game. A little panic, I think, in some of the St. Joe's fans. It said Phil Martelli says, relax, we're fine. Get a bucket, get a three, right back in it. Timeout. This out. Well, you thought Martelli might call the timeout, but he showed some patience. His team has scored five unanswered. We'll step away from the Palestra. Walk you through a little bit of the uh, history of this place they call the Cathedral of College Basketball. First hosted a game back on January 1st, 1927. More regular season and postseason NCAA men's games than any other venue. $2 million renovation back at the uh, turn of this century. And as the uh, home of LaSalle during the 08 09 season, while they were having some work done on their Tom Gola Arena. Numbers for the home court of this St. Joseph's program. But Dr. John Giannini was saying it, it, before the game, he said, you know, I don't think about Tennessee, I don't think about Illinois, Oklahoma State. He mentioned a bunch of other programs and other conferences. He said, I know if we're the best team in Philadelphia, chances are we're going to the big dance. All right, he said, you win the big five, you, in his opinion, are a lock for the NCAAs. We'll talk about his Illinois ties at the next dead ball, but he's got some ties to that program. Zach rolls to the basket. Garland high arcing three, no good. Tipped off the side of the board. Last touch by Ronald Roberts of St. Joseph's. 
He said to me before, and I've known John 25 years, we'll talk about it after the timeout. Five point lead for the Explorers here with 1440 reigning in the second half. Big Five, founded in 1955, never an official conference, but these five schools that you see here, Villanova, University of Pennsylvania, the Palestra is the home court for the Penn Quakers right now, Temple University, of course, the Explorers of LaSalle, and the Hawks of St. Joseph's. Back in 55, they agreed to play a home and home every year. That doesn't exist anymore, but the schools all play each other at least once, and we talked a little bit uh, a while ago about uh, Dr. John Giannini and what he thinks it means to be the best team in Philadelphia. He was also telling us all five schools have gone to at least one Final Four. No other city in America has yeah. more than two, like Chicago has in their uh, DePaul in Chicago and Loyola. Nobody else. Terrific history of college basketball in this city. Ramon Galloway finds Eric Duran, who knocks it down, and a quick point from Duran to Galloway saying, nice speed, 13 now. For the junior from here in Philadelphia, Tyreek Duran. Now Langston Galloway. Inside Kanosevic. Able to knock it down. But I'll tell you what, he's not the most graceful athlete, but he's powerful, tough. And when he got that opportunity to split the defenders, he finished. Eight points for Kanasevic, who started his college career at Hofstra. And inside, Steve Zach. Now with six points. And LaSalle with the eight-point lead. What a great job on the ball screen roll and get it to him and finish. Likes to Galloway. Wide open, coming off the screen, unable to hit the three. Good ball movement. Duran wide open from the baseline, knocks down another three. 16 points. Double digit deficit now for Phil Martelli's Hawks. He calls a timeout here. It is 45 34, LaSalle with the lead.
All right, when you run the high ball screen, roll this. You get a little bit of penetration, and now freeze it right here. Okay, in this whole area here, right in this area, you had the big guy that was here came up and set the screen. Now he's rolling back to the basket. Well, you can either hit him, or you can go to the wing and kick. Three defenders come to him, he rolls to the basket. Do I go to the three-point stripe? No, I'll take the dunk this time. Ramon Galloway has tied a season and career high with 10 assists so far here in the ball game. Anaseva kicks it back out. Jones. Skip pass Langston Galloway. No good. Duran with the rebound. It looks to be more of a bounce in LaSalle's step. It's a dangerous time right now for St. Joe's. Inside right, nice job to use the rim for protection, but couldn't finish on the reverse. Lob to the rim, Roberts, smart play. Big, little ice water on the crowd. Settle them down, now come back and let's see what they do defensively. If Roberts had left his feet for the lob, he, he never would have got that. He read that the pass wasn't gonna get there. Five points now for Ronald Roberts. Two-man game, Ramon Galloway, Steve Zack. Now they get right involved, and he is fouled on the way up. Well, we talked about the big five that's been around since 1955, and a guy that is a Philadelphia icon, Sonny Hill, an expert. We'll look at his all-time big five when we come back. Just to let you know who Sonny Hill is, simply Philadelphia's Mr. Basketball, member of Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame and the Basketball Hall of Fame, founded the Sonny Hill Youth Program back in the day, and here is his all-time Big Five. You look at some of the numbers for these guys. Guy Rogers, 20 assists in the Will 100-point game. How about Kenny Durrett, <laughs> yeah. three-time Big Five Player of the Year, led the Big Five in scoring three times. L Train won the Naismith and the Wooden as a senior, third all-time score behind Maravich and Freeman Williams, the Portland State star. Howard Porter, Villanova, final four, most outstanding player. I mean, just tremendous. And Hal King Lear, he was unbelievable. Lear and Rogers, they say, may be the greatest backcourt in the history of college buckets. Would have liked to have seen them against the St. Joe's uh, Jameer Nelson, Delonte West combination from the uh, 014 that went 27 and 0. Pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, cool. that would be fun. Nice 
Nice unselfish play by Langston Galloway down low. And here comes full court pressure now from St. Joe's. They did it with success. And their home win over Richmond. Let's see how the Explorers respond. They went on a 15-0 run against Richmond in the second half by going to the press, which Phil Martelli says, we don't do. But the guy suggested it. I said, okay. So here they go trying it now. Garland had it knocked away, and uh, jump ball is called possession arrow favoring. LaSalle, so it will stay at this end of the floor. This is just great on-ball defense. That's all-ball, outstanding defense. And Sonny Hill, uh, Cap, one of the reasons that I got into this business as a young kid growing up in Glens Falls, New York, I could listen to Johnny Most out of Boston, Marv Albert out of New York, and Andy Musser and Sonny Hill on WCAU. Sonny started his uh, broadcasting career back in 1969. I don't think he called it, but he made it. Tyreek Duran, a bank straight away. Banks are open on Saturdays in Philadelphia. Yes, 19 points now for Tyreek Duran. By the way, Tom Gola, for people at home going, Where, where's Tom Gola? It was before Big Five when he played. He graduated the year before, in 54. They started it in 55. Langston Galloway kicks it back out. Ten-point lead. And that's down to seven. There's Kano Seven showing that he's got some range. 6'8", 256-pound junior from Staten Island. And he started his collegiate career at Hofstra. Played one year there. Was the CAA all rookie team and a three-point answer from Ramon Galloway. And he just turned to the St. Joe student section and saluted them. <laughs> Thank goodness that's all he did. Danisevic crossover dribble kicks it out and some contact and Steve Zach not happy with the call. Well, here's Danisevic wide open, load it up and bury it. Gives a little pump, and then here's the kick. He's got the low point of release, but nobody's around him. What do you do with open looks? When you make them more often than not, yep. you will be on the winning side. Well, after this uh, game against LaSalle, St. Joe's home to GW at St. Louis, which is going to be difficult. Home to Fordham, Rhode Island. And then at Charlotte. So not an easy schedule. Not that there's anything such as an easy schedule in the A-10. There's Kanasevic for the second time. Very mild contact with a LaSalle player. And Martelli is screaming as the third foul against Kanasevic, who's become an important player here at the offensive end. Well, let's take a look again from this low angle. First of all, give Galloway credit. I think it was Galloway who yeah, took the yeah. charge. He sold it. But you cannot use that off arm at all. Might have gotten away with an acting job, but he sold it beautifully. He's now looking for their third Big Five win. Already have victories over Villanova and Penn. They will play Temple in their next conference game, which is... The last time they'll play a big five school this season. Five on the shot clock. Ramon Galloway stripped away with four on the shot clock. Not a great possession for LaSalle there. Too much standing around, too much dribbling. Everybody watching him. John Giannini saying, four seconds, guys. Give me motion. Give me movement. And he really stressed the importance of finishing in one of the top four spots in this A-10. Nice look underneath the door and it cuts wide open and lays it in. Coaches call those manufactured points. They diagram plays. Players make baskets. The diagram worked to perfection. Tyreek Durham with 21 and a traveling violation on Aiken before the shot. So don't count the basket. Beautifully done. Watch how he slips toward the basket, catches the defender not ready for that hard cut. Wide open. Article in the local paper is here recently calling Tyreek Duran simply the best player in the city. And that's quite a compliment, but he said, I, I, it's nice that people may think that, but we can't settle for that here at LaSalle. We're trying to build something special, rebuild something special, if you will, when you look at the history of this program. And this morning in the 
inquirer, it said LaSalle, simply the city's best team. So when you get the best player and you're called the best team, I think you're going to have a heck of a season coming out of this town. Carl Jones first, just second on the Hawks. Sal as far as the remaining uh, A-10 schedule for them, as I mentioned, at Temple, they'll be at Rhode Island, Duquesne, and GW they'll have at the Tom Gold Arena, then they finish at St. Louis. Well, all in front of the uh, LaSalle Explorers as Ramon Galloway had it knocked away by Langston. Langston Galloway. Good recovery there by Wilson. Langston Galloway knocked down a difficult three for the baseline, and now... More full court pressure here from the Hawks. That was a huge basket. You force a turnover and find a way not to let that ball roll out of bounds, and you end up with a triple. Everything worked for St. Joseph. Nice roll to the basket right. He hit that little lefty hook earlier in the half. That one was short, stays with it, knocked away. Kanasevic, even with his 3,000. Let's see who this is going to be on. I think it's going to be on Langston Galloway. I was going to say the crowd loves it, but half the crowd loves it. Half the crowd can't stand it. 53-44, LaZelle. Celebrate hockey with a day filled with great NHL matchups. NBC will have the Penguins and the Sabres, followed by the Kings and the Blackhawks, leading up to the Capitals and Rangers from Madison Square Garden here on the NBC Sports Network. Hockey Day in America presented by Discover. Coverage begins at noon Eastern here on NBC as we take a look at the Hawk mascot for St. Joseph. Flaps its wings 3,500 times per game. That is Ian Klinger. He's on a full scholarship. If you are the Hawk, you get a full scholarship to go to school. He goes to every game. He has to be in shape. He's got certain rituals that he does. Unbelievable. What a cool way to go to school. Mascot first appeared in a St. Joe's LaSalle matchup January 4th, 1956. Can you name me the former Division I head coach who was a mascot? That would be Bruce Pearl was the oh, wow. Boston College <laughs> Eagle. <laughs> Ramon Galloway, fouled going to the basket. I hope good a weekend for me. I get to come to the Cathedral of College Basketball, then I go to the world's most famous arena for Hockey Day in America tomorrow to wrap things up with the Rangers and Capitals tomorrow. Phenomenal. And the Hawk has his own showcase here. 
You walk around the hall, well, you and I saw the hall here yeah. is just loaded with the coolest memorabilia. Wait, every time St. Joe's made a run, LaSalle has answered right back. Seven for Ramon Galloway. Of course, the Explorers led by Tyreek Dorn, who has 21 points. Wilson, nice look underneath. Kanasemic finishes. Pretty pass, though. Outstanding feed by Wilson to find Kanasemic, and he finished. Good movement in that possession by St. Joe. Zach with a little one-hand floater from the baseline is good. Well, he's only a sophomore. As Sack gets more and more comfortable, he is going to be a real force in this league. Eight points now for Steve Zack. Wilson lost his footing, almost kept his triple alive. The two Galloways going head to head, and Langston won that matchup there with the fadeaway. Hawks need some stops, though. They need to shrink wrap the front court here. They have in the first half used their press in a half court setting right now they have got to get as you call it stops a couple in a row and convert Mills pulls it back out now hands it off to Tyreek Duran and it's slapped away and a foul on the way through and from the reaction of Darius Quarles I would guess it's going to be on him and his second well, the reaction of Phil Martelli, he is furious. He is absolutely furious. He was barking at the official. He just... <laughs> I won't even go there. He is not a happy camper right now. Well, tonight at 7 Eastern, college basketball coverage continues here on the NBC Sports Network. Ivy League matchup between Princeton and Harvard. Then at 9 Eastern... Pivotal Mountain West clash when San Diego State tips off against the Rebels of UNLV. 23 points now for Duran. Kanasevic sets the screen. Wilson. Sevic spins away from Zach, puts it up with the left hand, count it, and a foul. That was a prime time move. This is a guy showing you ability to put it on the deck, spin move. Said, who said I wasn't a great athlete? I'm going to finish inside, take the hit, hoop in the harm. That is a big time finish. He's missed a few games this year, three as a result of the death of the family when he had to leave the team in a couple of games for an unsportsmanlike situation. But he's been an important player with Phil Martelli. Back with a dangerous pass, Tyreek Duran able to pull it in. Two good basketball teams, two good coaches. Phil Martelli, a legend. I think John Giannini is one of the bright young coaches in college basketball. He's done a magnificent job here at LaSalle. Ramon Galloway had it knocked away. It's loose and a lead pass now for Wilson. Nice catch. Tries to go behind the back. That's a good idea. He had Roberts there. There's the steal. And now Boomer off to the races. Got to find a way to finish this. Either jump stop You've got to find a way to finish that. It's too good an advantage to not walk away with points. That was Mills that was back defensively. And a seven against Wright with a ball fake. Roberts was looking forward to the low post. They couldn't get it to him. Shot clock. Wilson lays it up too strong, but a foul outside. Tyreek Durant called for the grab. 
Here comes the dribble penetration. And there's where you get the contact. You can see the one arm on the hip. 14 foul. Hannah Sevick floats it up too strong. And a strong rebound by Terrell Wright of the Explorers. to the lane. Nice little floater. Little finger roll. Nobody stopped the ball for St. Joe's. He gets really nice penetration, Tyreek Duran, and then just finished with the finger roll. Difficult shot off the glass by Carl Jones as he answers right back, which St. Joe's needs to do with 4-16 remaining here in the second half. The Explorers lead it by eight. with a 61-53 lead, 4-16 remaining in the second half of this ball game. We've talked a lot about the history of the Palestra and the different things you can see in the concourse, including the uh, Tom Gola case. And uh, what a career. NCAA championship in 1954. There he is wearing number 15. What a player. I remember having Tom Gola Converse gym shoes as a kid. I had I had, a, uh, I had a Tom Gold of basketball. It was one of my first. And by the way, the uniforms that LaSalle is wearing today are throwbacks to mark 150 years of the school, and they're from the era when Gola was coaching. Yes, from the late 60s. 12 on the shot clock, Ramon Galloway. Peterson thought about the three. Tyreek Duran. Contested shot, and two contested, according to the official. As uh, Langston Galloway picks up the foul, his fifth. Duran having uh, quite an afternoon here in a big game at the Palestra in Philadelphia. Lightning quick, has great range, can hit from beyond the arc. He 
Cap, as you pointed out a couple times, what do you do with open shots? And he's knocked them down, but there's a great example of how he can put it on the floor and get to the rim. Well, they've done a very good job at understanding where he's going to be on the floor and getting him the ball. There were passes that were released before he ever got to the spot, much like a quarterback in the NFL. A bounce pass coming, and they know he's going to get there. Catch, load it up, and he buries the shot. Loves playing on the NBC Sports Network because he's closing in on his career-high 29 that he had in a game on our air here in December when he had 29. And Langston Galloway has fouled out. See, they take these games to heart the kids because you play against each other in the uh, summer. Oh, absolutely. You grew up with many of them. And man, oh man, the trash talking doesn't stop till the next time you meet. Double-digit lead now for the Explorers. Still plenty of time for the Hawks with three and a half remaining. Coral spins off the glass. Count it, and he'll go to the line. And I think they're going to get Ramon Galloway on the foul. He has that pained expression, but I believe that's who they're going to get. Second on Ramon Galloway and the fifth team foul here in the second half. With his free throw so important, close the gap, plus you can set up your full court pressure, which is exactly what they do now after they made free throw. Pass was deflected. Peterson goes down. Nearly a steal. Oh. Half the building goes crazy because they got in the front court. The other half groans. If you're just joining us, they literally take the 8,000 plus seats, split them 50-50, right down the middle. Half to LaSalle, half to St. Joe's. They're all gone. Durant kicks it out to Mills. Five on the shot clock. Ramon Galloway with a ball fake. The floater is good. Oh, nice shot. I think he got popped in the face. Yep. Uh, right after he released the ball. Nine points for Ramon Galloway. Aggressively to the basket, short was Carl Jones on the layup attempt. John Giannini said Lou Henson had a huge impact on my life. Spent two years on his staff at Illinois. But he said nobody was better at preparing for a game. He said, I take a lot from him on how we prepare every time we play. Well, LaSalle just nursing the clock here. It's down to eight on the shot clock. Duran finds a wide open Ramon Galloway from three, and he knocks it down. They have done that consistently throughout the afternoon. When they are open, they finish. You go to the game chart and look at open shots. To me, that's the story of the game. Roberts inside, has to kick it back out. Less than two minutes remaining, a deep three. No good. And fouled on the putback was Kanasevic. DJ Peterson. Yeah. But watch this, as the shot clock's running down, but see how his feet are set? They do a magnificent job at LaSalle. And whenever they've got a perimeter shooter, their feet are set before the ball gets there. So you don't have to catch it, set your feet, Get your elbow in, your shoulders over your toes, and now I can let it go because the defender gets there. Second on Peterson, the 16th foul, and Kanasevic can't get the first one down. Minute 48 remaining. 12-point Explorer lead, looking to go to 8-3. and three In the Atlantic 10. Kanasevic missed them both. Turned over, Quarles. No good, put back up and in. And a quick timeout. LaSalle is screaming for basket interference against the Hawks. Tough to tell if that was offensive goaltending, offensive basket interference. There are a number of hands up there at the rim, and you take the rim in infinity, all the way up to the sky. Anything in that cylinder area I think that's not basket interference. Yeah, Ronald I Roberts got, gets credit for it, Cap. I think you're right. I think that ball was just outside the rim.
here's a great look at it. It bounces out. That ball's out. That's just a good, aggressive stick back. Well, the Hawks with 17 fouls. So LaSalle will be in the bonus. Next foul for LaSalle will put uh, St. Joe's at the line, one and one. Ramon Galloway is uh, touched there by Roberts to draw the foul, stop the clock. Phil Martelli said to me, coaching basketball at St. Joe's, I'm living in life's candy store. Today he might feel like he's got a bit of a cavity. Yeah. This guy, hit, Phil Martelli, has had so many schools call. Would you be interested in leaving? He said, never. This is where I am. I'm a Philly guy, and they've been loyal to me. 13 points to go with 11 assists for Ramon Galloway. And we talked about the guards at the top of the show, Cap. And uh, I think it's safe to say the LaSalle guards have won the battle here this afternoon. They have. They've stepped up, done the job from the perimeter, and they've really done a good job defensively. Offensive rebound, count it. Ronald Roberts asserting himself here in the second half. Leads the Atlantic 10 in rebounding and in offensive rebounding specifically. And now, a big one there. If you watch, watch zero. That is Zach. Watch his arm come down. Go straight up. It's called the principle of verticality. You stand there with your arms straight up to the ceiling, and there's contact made. It's offensive. But if you bring that arm down like he did, automatic whistle. That's what John Giannini was preaching at him. Another free throw miss, so that's three straight for the Hawks here after Kanasevic missed two, and then Roberts unable to complete the three-point play. And you saw Steve Zack, uh, who picked up his fifth foul for the Sal a few moments ago. Now Wilson for the Hawks is called for the foul, and Duran going to the line. Point number 28, a chance to tie his career high with this free throw. Nine. 19 of them here in the second half. You really want us to do every game. Yeah. Hawks in a hurry. Baseline shot was short. Ramon Galloway went up and picked it out of midair. Less than a minute remaining now. After you read on their feet, the other half for Lauren. Now this will be a stretch of uh, three losses in four games for Phil Martelli and the Hawks, and they will drop to five and six in the Atlantic 10. Tyreek Duran had it blocked, gets a hand on it to keep it alive. Two seconds on the shot clock, and the fourth baseline attempt there by Jarrell White was an air ball shot clock violation. This will be four straight wins on the conference for Dr. Giannini's Explorers after a one-point loss against UMass. 24 and a half seconds. Clock stops now with a 10-point LaSalle lead. This is more a teaching moment for Phil Martelli rather than a moment where you're still trying to strategize to try and win. You never give up hope. But he also is going to make sure his guys understand. Guys, we did not play well today. They were the better team today. We, this is not a tournament. We're not done. Let's take from this. Let's learn. And let's be ready to go on March hits. How good is that A-10 tournament going to be? Awesome. You know, again, and this is so big for John Giannini. He talked about it. Get in the top four. Get that by. Then the middle eight teams play each other. In a single elimination, the four survivors then play the four teams that have the bye. The bottom four in the league don't make it. So when you when you look at the standings, I mean, there, there's a chance for 
couple of very good programs not to get in. Right now, Dayton's on the outside looking in. Rhode Island, you know, they only have two wins in the conference, but they win at St. Louis and home against Dayton. Just, it's a conference that's hard to figure out from, from one game to the next. And St. Louis is playing exceptional basketball. LaSalle using one of their two remaining timeouts. Take a look at what's uh, upcoming in the Atlantic 10 later on today. Xavier and Dayton Butler taking on Fordham. Bonnie's against Richmond. Uh, correction, that, that's already a final score with uh, Dayton winning 70 59. Charlotte St. Louis is going to be a great game. We had Charlotte early in the year, we could tell they were going to be good. Allen Majors Club playing very good basketball in St. Louis, as I just said. They have really embraced interim coach Jim Cruz, and they're still running the Majerus system. They're very good. Well, that is a, a huge win for Dayton. Slapped away by Quarles. Three-pointer on the way, hits the side rim. Ramon Galloway has it. Sends it ahead for Mills. Lays it up and in. Roberts with the two-hand slam. The lob to the left-hand dunk by Ramon Galloway. That is finishing in style. LaSalle has the bragging rights. They are undefeated against Big Five competition. John Giannini's club goes to 8-3 and three as they try to keep pace with the teams at the top. Joining VCU is the other team, as you see right there, with eight wins. St. Louis, uh, the only conference team with only two in the loss column. St. Joe's falls to 5-6. and six. We mentioned uh, Dayton won their game. Earlier against Xavier, they go to four and seven. A terrific performance by the backcourt of LaSalle. And the final score, 76-64. Remember, college basketball continues tonight on the NBC Sports Network. Seven Eastern, Ivy League class between Princeton and Harvard. Then at 9 Eastern, San Diego State and UNLB collide in a pivotal Mountain West matchup. For Dave Kaplan and the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Strader saying so long and thanks for watching. Now let's send you to Ron Thompson in our NBC Sports Studio. John Giannini.
an outstanding win for your LaSalle Explorers. Can you tell us about your guard play today? They were outstanding. You know, we, we have a team with great role definition. We have a number of great guards. I thought in particular Galloway, Ramon passed the ball great. Tyrone made a lot of plays. Sam Mills was tremendous defensively. All our guards were terrific, but you know, we trust those guys with the ball in our hands. And our big guys, they play great defense, and they rebound and they finish. We just have great role definition. You had told me before the game that it, you were a little nervous about St. Joe's inside game. Defensively, you handled that. Our big guys were terrific. And when the guards ended up on a big guy, they did a great job fronting. Uh, again, sometimes you have unsung heroes, guys who don't jump out of the stat sheet. I'm telling you, Steve Zach, uh, Jarrell Wright, and Rohan Brown took a huge charge, and he played great when he was in there. Those big guys played terrific defense in the post. In addition, you guys understand the change from offense to defense very well. Transition was very good today. Yeah, you know, we're, we're when, with three guards, you're not going to get a ton of offensive rebounds, which it's not horrible because we, it really does a good job with stopping the other team from getting easy ones in transition. Congratulations. Great win today. Great, Dave. Thank you. There is Dr. John Giannini.